Hi, my name is Katie J. Simmons, e-commerce specialist for Fit Small Business, here to walk you through the inventory management tools and features available on Amazon Seller Central. If you're new to selling on Amazon, it's definitely worth taking some time to get acquainted with all of the functions of this interface. But today we are going to be focusing on the inventory menu here, taking a quick look at everything that it has to offer. Starting with this Manage Inventory tab up at the top. From here, you can view, edit, and generally manage your listings and their attributes. You can filter your products by status, by fulfillment method, by date or price ranges, or you can opt to just search for a product or listing by SKU, title, or a number of other identifiers that we'll cover a little bit later. So these filters are particularly helpful for those managing large inventories or for performing batch functions which can be done by selecting any number of your products or selecting all and choosing an action from this dropdown up above. Other actions can be performed product by product from this menu on the right. From this view, you can also edit the quantity that you have available as well as pricing details by default but all of these columns are actually customizable, as are many of the listing displays on Seller Central. By hitting this Preferences button here, you can set the values that appear whenever you view your listings from that page. To add a product and get your inventory rolling, you'll click this Add a Product button here, which can also be found under the Catalog tab as well as the inventory main menu for easy access. You'll then be prompted to enter either the product name or another identifier. From here, you can paste in the UPC, which is the universal product code, the EAN, which is the European article number, the ISBN, which is the international standard book number, or the ASIN, sometimes called the ASIN, which is the Amazon standard identification number. For our demonstration, we're going to be putting in this ASIN, which pulls up a novel that is already listed on the marketplace by a number of other sellers. Now, if this isn't the case for your product, you can create a new listing by using this option on the left. But since ours is a pre-existing product that we are eligible to list, we can simply select a condition and hit sell. On the next page, you'll enter in some basic info such as the SKU, the standard price, list price, which is the MSRP, the quantity that you have in stock, condition, and the fulfillment method for the product. Once submitted, listing changes do take some time to be approved and accurately reflected on your dashboard, although this usually takes no longer than a few minutes. There is an alternative way to add products, which is to add via upload, as shown here on the inventory main menu. This feature enables volume sellers to upload new items in bulk through spreadsheets containing various product info. Amazon provides detailed templates for creating these files, and they end up looking like this. Adding via upload is generally not recommended for new sellers, but it is a useful tool to keep in mind as you grow your inventory, your store, and your Amazon brand. Now that you have products added to your Amazon inventory, you can explore how to manage them. Amazon provides some very helpful data that you can use to identify ways to reduce costs, improve sales, and generally tighten your ship, so to speak, as well as uncover opportunities to expand. This especially applies to FBA sellers. We're using a shell account here, so there really isn't any data to draw from, but let's take a quick look at the data-driven pages within the Seller Central Inventory Manager, starting with the Listing Quality Dashboard, which you can find here under the tab that says Improve Listing Quality. On the Listing Quality Dashboard, you'll find stats, metrics, and tools to ensure high-quality listings and improve the discoverability of your listings. 
once you have listing data, products here are normally sorted by sales and page views. This enables you to prioritize and focus on the items that matter most to your business. Here you'll see how listings are performing and you'll see any missing attributes that once added can increase the discoverability of your listings and potentially decrease your return rate. This dashboard will also point out if there are any issues that need urgent attention, specifically in terms of listing suppression and listing accuracy. There's also the option to edit in bulk via upload, which is similar to the add product via upload feature that we covered earlier. Back to the inventory menu, we have the inventory planning tab, which pulls up the inventory dashboard. This is a page that you'll likely use very frequently as an Amazon speller, seller, especially if you're using FBA. Like I said, the account that we're demoing on today lacks data, but here's a preview of what this dashboard looks like for established accounts that fulfill through FBA. This image is coming from a video that created by Amazon Lit, which is a very helpful channel. So here you can see the cards present on your inventory dashboard. There is the inventory performance index, which is a rating calculated based on how well you keep key products in stock, how much of a cushion of stock that you provide, how quickly any flags or listing issues are resolved, and generally how well you maintain the health of your inventory. There is a card with recommendations for SKUs to restock today, one for excess units, uh, which points out inventory that might be incurring excess carrying costs based on quantity and sales velocity. We have a days in inventory card. This is an estimate of how long your existing inventory is expected to last. It also features a calculation of how many times your inventory is expected to turn in a given year. Um, down below, we have these actionable feature cards. First, there's more information on managing your excess inventory here. The second one lets you see and act on any recent notifications. The third card, you can view stats regarding your FBA inventory age. And finally, there's a detailed card with info and recommendations for restocking your inventory. So bear in mind that a lot of the cards and info presented on the inventory dashboard will be different depending on your primary fulfillment method. If you don't use FBA at all, this page will show fewer cards. It'll be limited to estimated last sales, out of stock SKUs, and the restock low in inventory feature card. Moving on down the inventory main menu, you'll find multiple options to manage your order fulfillments. In case you're not familiar with Amazon's multiple fulfillment options, there are two primary methods. There's fulfillment by merchant or FBM in which sellers are responsible for storing, picking, packing, and shipping their own orders. And then there's fulfillment by Amazon or FBA, which is Amazon's third party fulfillment service. If you're enrolled in FBA, your goods are stored and processed at an FBA warehouse rather than managed in your own care. Seller Central has tools to manage inventory for either of these fulfillment methods and for both of these fulfillment methods as some sellers choose to do. So visiting the Manage FBA Inventory tab, this interface is gonna be a critical tool for you if you use FBA because it is the portal to manage all of the products that you're having shipped to, stored within, and fulfilled by FBA. It also allows you to see and manage your FBA fees. It functions similarly to the Manage Inventory tab, but of course it has very different columns, although these are similarly customizable by using this Preferences button here. FBA sellers can also use and access a number of additional inventory management tools from this page up above, many of which are available from this main inventory menu that we covered earlier. The Manage Seller Fulfilled Products this page is another useful tool, but it's for those who participate in FBM. It's a repository for your fulfillment stats, including units sold, GMS, 
our gross merchandise sales, as well as some performance stats and some recommendations. So heading back to that main inventory menu, we have the inventory reports tab. From here, you can generate and download a range of different reports that each give you a snapshot of your listings. You'll begin by choosing which report to generate. There are a number of options that each basically apply a different preset filter, but most of these are customizable, which is a really great feature. So you can hit customize the columns for this report, and then you can add or remove attributes so that you can get a report that shows only the data that you need. Once your report type is selected, you can request it by hitting this button here. It usually takes a few minutes for the document to be ready to download, depending on the size of your inventory and the depth of the report, but usually it doesn't take very long at all. Once your report is available, you can hit download and you'll see that it arrives as a raw text file. So from here, you can just select all of the text and copy it. And you'll move into a spreadsheet program where you can paste this, but be sure to paste it as values only in order to uh, maintain the correct formatting. So usually this is done by going into edit, paste special and selecting values only. But alternatively, you can just hit control shift V on your keyboard. And there you have it. Heading back to Seller Central, we're going to visit the Sell Globally tab in the inventory menu. This is uh, the hub for global sellers. It provides sales data, some broad level listing info, as well as some info on the health of your account, all segmented by markets. This page also features some nice resources and guides for expanding internationally. Going back to the main inventory menu, there are some media management and upload tabs. There's one for videos, which is only accessible if you're a brand or a seller who meets certain eligibility requirements, including one year of sales history, among a few other things. But the image manager under upload images is available to all. This allows you to upload images for your listings either singularly or in bulk via zip files. You can also check image submission status and view some helpful image resources. Lastly, on the inventory menu, we have the manage product documents tab. This is for the management of A plus content which is only available to professional sellers who are brand registered. In case the phrase A plus content is new to you, I will pull up a quick example for reference. It's the rich content down in the item description. That's usually photos, graphics, sometimes videos, um, or charts like this one um, that's featured in the description of some items. You've likely seen it before on Amazon. It's a great conversion tool for brands who are at that level, but this page um, generally doesn't apply to new sellers on Amazon. Another important tool that doesn't appear on the inventory menu is the Amazon Selling Coach, which lives in the reports menu here. So this tool sends you personalized recommendations that pertain to your inventory, as well as your products, your pricing, fulfillment, and your advertising. From this selling coach page, you can see reports and recorded recommendations. You can set and adjust your preferences and your communication settings. You can search and you can filter through previous recommendations. When it comes to inventory management, this is particularly helpful because you can receive low stock alerts when it's time to reorder. And these are based on lead times that you enter for each of your products. It's also a great repository for other data that can help you make smart reorder decisions to avoid stockouts and other detrimental inventory issues. So all of that being said, the Amazon Selling Coach is only available to sellers who are on a professional plan. 
So that is a brief summary of how to use the various tools that Seller Central provides you with to manage your Amazon inventory. There are plenty of sellers, particularly small ch scale and single channel sellers, who accomplish everything that they need to from this interface alone. But there are a number of third party Amazon management systems available that are pretty affordable and can really amplify your ability to manage your inventory, um, among many other functions. If you are looking into this, I would recommend checking out Jungle Scout, Inventory Lab, or Order Hive. These are all very accessible tools for new sellers. They have low monthly costs and pretty robust features that sync well with Seller Central and your Amazon account. More established businesses that might have access to the resources to fund a much pricier subscription could definitely benefit from Bright Pearl or Skubana, which are both very excellent systems. I hope that this video helped to show you around one aspect of Seller Central and provide some guidance for effective Amazon inventory management. Be sure to check out more Amazon content on fitsmallbusiness.com and I will see you there.